So uh, I'm Colin Kasunik, and um, I work uh, helping emerging energy companies understand the project finance space. Actually, I have a lot of my finance background uh, learned in the trenches as well. And I have a couple slides, too, that might help some sort of project finance for dummy slides, actually. So <laughs> that'll lead in a little bit. But uh, my background, I started 2009, got into the space uh, when my CEO had a great idea that uh, someone needed to do a, uh, a project finance business model for distributed wind. Now, distributed wind is a lot like what you see with solar now. You could think of rooftop solar. The parallel would be backyard wind. And so in 2009, we started to figure out how to solve the problem of how much wind energy is in a given location. We tried to sell this product and realized that it wasn't really a valuable product and not a lot of people wanted it. But what they did want was wind turbines. And how could they get them the same way that Solar City then was starting to offer them to people through these things called power purchase agreements and through leases, through a third party ownership structure. So we embarked on this and uh, built a lot of things. We started out with help from equipment leasing companies. We started out with help from local angel investors making project investments. Um, you know, even just a few years ago, the ecosystem for new energy companies trying to f do project finance was not what it is today. Um, but we kind of pulled our way up. And so I left in 2014, started working with other energy companies uh, outside of solar, outside of wind, to try to figure out what can we do here? Because there's a lot of room for this. Technologies that are, they're, they work really well, but they're just not well adopted. So I took that beyond and started speaking with other customers. What happened in the meantime, though, was United Wind went and raised more and more project capital, $250 million from, uh, from one group. And they've been out there trying to install projects. Um, so that's pretty good. But really, back to what I do, I consult to energy companies that want to understand the project financing space. Actually, uh, one of them is in the audience now, one of the companies that I worked with, and it was solar. So uh, back when crowdfunding of solar was, people were just thinking about it, uh, one of these folks had an idea for trying to do so new solar programs with money coming from uh, nonprofits. And so this, had a, this was a great idea that had a lot of legs. It failed for other reasons, but we had a lot of traction. Similarly, there's a lot of opportunities in community solar. There's a lot of opportunities in uh, uh, energy efficiency, solar thermal. There's been a lot that's happened around here. Um, so <clears throat> really, though, it's all about project finance. So what I could do is, what is project finance, really? It's raising money against a, an asset. So if you go with a business, you might say, I want to take out a loan based on the strength of my business. That's based on the, the credit of the business itself. Uh, what Project Finance is about, though, it's not about that. It's about you have a defined, tangible asset that generates cash flow. So the capital to buy those assets goes into a special company, an SPE, and it's lent or invested as equity uh, on what's called non-recourse. So if this company goes out of business, then the parent company that's, you know, originating all of these solar projects or wind projects, they're not technically on the hook. But what it is secured by is these long-term cash flows from the asset. So you have a PPA that's signed with a credit-worthy company. Say Home Depot wants to put solar panels on their roof. Well, they'll sign a PPA for 20 years. Now you have a 20-year commitment for cash flows from a solar energy system. <clears throat> so there's really three players in this. You, you've heard of third-party ownership structure. There's an investor, a developer, and a client. And so the investor is the one putting up the capital. The developer is the one coming up with the projects, the technology solution provider. And the client is the beneficiary of all of this. <clears throat> so it's really beneficial, and it's done a lot to accelerate the space. Um, for an investor, there's lower business risk. You don't have to worry as much about the management team of the developer because if it's a, if it's a solar project that's gotten to be pretty uniform, you can just say, okay, well, the company that originated this had, went out of business, but we can sell this. This is a uniform asset. Um, and you, there's just other market risks that you have to worry about less. The system's out and producing, that's it. It's going to make its cash flow should all go well. 
um, the investor gets control over the project too. So if, uh, if the developer goes out of business, the investor can actually take over the project and own it or sell it. The developer, for their part though, they don't, you can be a small company and if you can originate good projects that are solid with good technology, you can get into the project financing space for your technologies. Uh, you don't need to be very credit worthy, you don't need to have massive revenues, you can get in and do that. And I think one of the biggest things is this whole model has opened up the market for clients to just really feel comfortable with renewable energy. Right? Back in the beginning when solar was just being funded this way to, to consumers, a lot of people would say, well, why would I take the risk of a solar panel? I don't know if it's going to work, and then I have to maintain it and fix it, and then what happens if it breaks? And I have to put all the money up for this too? Well, project financing these solves all those problems. The investor is taking the risk that the system is not going to work. Uh, the investor is putting up the money. The investor is getting the return over time. So that risk is traded off, and, and the client gets to try this new technology pretty easily. So um, besides that, yeah, this is something that people are seeing in all sorts of different areas, both creative areas of solar, like community solar uh, and crowdfunding. And um, you know, right now, solar, utility wind, those are the big ones. But geothermal could be bigger. Uh, solar PV could be bigger. Energy efficiency could be much bigger. It's, it's not as sexy as the other ones, but there's a lot of room there. Um, so that's what I help to do. And uh, you know, in that way, I think Tom and the rest of the panel are all on the same page, trying to get more of this stuff adopted.